Chapter 5, text number 18, and the title of the chapter is Vidura, Vidura's Talks with Maitreya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate 
Bhagavate Vasudevaya Bhagavate Vasudevaya Maitreya Vacha Sadhu Prishtam Tvaya Sadhu Lokam Sadhu Anugrenata Kirtin Vitanvata Loke Atmano Adhokshaja Atmana Maitreya Vacha Sadhu Prishtam Tvaya Sadhu Lokam Sadhva Nagrinata Kirtin Vitan Vitaloke Atmano Duksha Jatmana Maitreya Vacha Sadhu Prishtam Tvaya Sadhu Lokam Sadhana Gvinata Kirtin Vitanam Vitaloke Atmano Doksha Jatmana Maitre Uvacha Sadhu Prishtam Tvaya Sadhu Lokam Sadvanu Grinata Kirtin Vitam Vitaloke Atmano Doksha Jatmana Maitreya Sri Maitreya says, Sadhu, all good, Prishtam, I am asked, Tvaya, by you, Sadho, O good one, Lokam, all the people, Sadhu, Anugrinata, showing mercy in goodness, Kirtim, Glories, Vitan Vita, broadcasting, 
loke in the world atmanaha of the self adhokshaja the transcendence atmanaha <coughs> mind translation purport by shri divine grace the ac bhaktivedanta swami prabhupad shri maitreya said o vidura all glory unto you you have inquired from me of the greatest of all goodness and thus you have shown your mercy both to the world and to me because your mind is always absorbed in thoughts of the transcendence purport by maitreya muni who was experienced in the science of transcendence could understand that vidura's mind was fully absorbed in transcendence at hokshaja means that which transcends the limits of sense perception or sensuous experience the lord is transcendental to our sense experience but he reveals himself to the sincere devotee because vidura was always absorbed in thought of the lord maitreya could estimate vidura's transcendental value he appreciated the value the valuable inquiries of vidura and thus thanked him with great honor and the purport excuse me appearing to be eating a sweet I'm trying to let's say soothe the throat a little bit and uh, maybe speak a little bit clearer maitreya vacha sadhu prishtam tvaya sadho lokam sarvanu binata kirtin vitanvata loke atmanodokshajatmana dear god brothers and god sisters thank you for your association and please i beg your forgiveness if there's any offense or any thing i say which may not be inspiring um but i just like to run through the verse and purport a little bit in a way of when we gather together for shrimad bhagavatam class what are we what is the purpose what is our goal of here we see maitreya muni now he's addressing vidura they're together it's a small group when bhagavatam was spoken in naimashranya the big group 88000 sages on the banks of the ganga when prakash maharaj was inquiring for shukade was so quite a large group we gather today maybe 40 of us i don't know how many But what is the purpose of our coming here today anyone like to venture a suggestion purification excuse me i couldn't hear to hear about the supreme lord's pastimes okay definitely that's shrimad bhagavatam the pinnacle the essence of shrimad bhagavatam contained the lord has we heard the other day maybe not here i don't know discussing the various categories the various avatars of the lord the various stages of preparation um to come to the eligibility to hear with the right um consciousness the pastimes of krishna 
tenth canto. What else? This is one of the questions the sages asked, isn't it? They wanted to hear about the transcendental activities, the pastimes of the Lord. They wanted to hear about his incarnation, various incarnations and so on. What other reason are we here? Anything else? Hmm? Maybe I couldn't hear it. A form of worship here, the word is mentioned. In fact, uh, we often uh, use, the word, all the time we're using the word kirtan. What does kirtan mean? What is kirtan? What does it mean? Ah, Shabnam kirtan. Pardon? Glorification of the Lord, so worship of the Lord. I mean, it's not maybe direct, but it means it certainly is worshiping the Lord through chanting and hearing his glories. And the word is here, kirtim, kirtim, I think, in the third line there, glories. Huh? Glories, but this word glory is addressed here to um, all glory to you. Maitreya is saying to Vidura, um, um, all glories to you, um, all glory unto you, Jai, Kirta, Kirta. And he explains why. It's not some flattery, it's not some kind of, you know, whatever. It's, uh, it's for a specific reason. So Kirtim, glories, glorification. Um, what else? Anything else we're here for? Deepen our relationship with Krishna. Excuse me? To deepen our relationship with Krishna. These, these are very, um, you could say, uh, quite progressive uh, objectives. It's very nice. Um, this was practical and progressive. And also, you know, conclusive to hear the pastimes of Krishna, to deepen our relationship with Krishna. Very nice. Goals um, or stages towards our ultimate goal. Practical worship. Okay. Anything else? Pardon, Vaishnavi? Is that? To what? Cleanse the heart. Cleanse the heart. Okay, very practical. We're hoping. It, we we're hoping for that. We, I think we heard a verse this morning from the Namamrita. One devotee was reading a verse this morning. I didn't hear it very easily, but I think, I may be wrong, I think it was Nivrita Tarshu Pigyamanad Babhoshiti Chotra Mano Biramat Gautama Shloka Gunanavadat. Um, yes, to um, purify our consciousness in the association of devotees, um, reading Srimad Bhagavatam or hearing the glories, the Kutama Shloka Gunanavada. It purifies our consciousness. It, we also have to hear from the right source. We're trying to hear from Srila Prabhupada and her Parampara. Um, this has, does have the effect, it's the most purifying. Um, aspect in many ways of devotional service to in the association of devotees to hear and chant um, uh, the message of Godhead in whatever form it is. Um, even the instructions given to prepare us or directions to follow, to cleanse our hearts are all part of this ultimately being able to hear um, about the transcendental pastimes of the Lord. Anything else? Excuse me? Two? Please Krishna. Please Krishna? Nice one. Yes. Well, how do we know it's pleasing to Krishna? Um, of course, we may hear some scriptural statements that, you know, by chanting the holy name of the Lord, this pleases Krishna. How else do we know it's pleasing to Krishna? Pardon? Speak a little louder in the mic. I'm really sorry. You have a very gentle voice. To please? Please is devotees. Please is It's related, isn't it? It's actually a fact. Um, and, and you can take that further. It's the same principle, pleasing the devotees, pleasing Krishna. You can't really separate the two in terms of absoluteness. Um, and pleasing the devotees means many things. Um, and we could take it very 
straightforwardly in terms of why does attending Bhagavatam class, what do we mean pleasing the devotees? What does it mean in terms of attending Srimad Bhagavatam? We can try and improve our service. Okay, you can take it in a practical sense to try to improve our general service. But in terms of directly, why does it please, how does it please Krishna? Or could say, how does it please the devotees? It's obviously the same. Yes, Vaishnava. This will definitely have to be. I'm, I'm a, Churn more nectar by discussing the topics of the Oh, that's another, that's another one. A nice one, churning nectar. Well, that's, that's kind of like, obviously correct, but it's a little different to how, it, I mean, it does. Obviously, it pleases the devotees if you churn the nectar. But I was thinking a little more specific. Did you catch that one? <laughs> Krishna can hear everything you're saying, by the way. Don't worry, even if I can. Krishna can hear everything you're saying. Don't, don't feel bad about it. It's a... Asia Kali, I heard that. Name, I heard that. Okay, oh, these are, these are very wonderful meditations and practical, let's say, reminders. I was thinking, okay, I'll we'll just jump in another direction a little bit. They're all great. Um, in terms of, uh, why, are we, why are we here today? Probably we're here today, I and mean, if we go back a little bit, it's probably because Srila Prabhupada... Is that... Someone got an answer back there. <laughs> Who was that? Was that you? Oh dear. Maybe you could ask your mobile to be quiet for a little while. Um, we're probably here because Prabhupada asked us to be here. Isn't it? I mean, if he hadn't said it, you know, you should come to Bhagavatam class, or even, he, 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 didn't, he established it, he didn't have to establish it. We probably established the Bhagavatam class and we asked us to come to Bhagavatam class. Like it a lump, he even said one time it's a good, good way to catch up on your sleep. But at least you're there. <laughs> <laughs> different incidents, he said different things, but you know, his prophet, which, and you know, how do we make advancement in Krishna consciousness? That's a pretty broad question, it can cover 108 different answers. But trying to think in terms of what I just said. The mercy of the spiritual master? The? Mercy of the spiritual master. Yeah, you've got to get the mercy of the spiritual master. How do you get the mercy of the spiritual master? Follow his instructions. Follow his instructions? You're doing good. What about the men? They don't seem to know anything at all this morning. <laughs> They're all dullards over here. What's going on with the men? <laughs> Bunch of dudes. Huh? Oh, they're very humble. The men in New Govardhan are epitome of hum humility. <laughs> I, I, now I understand the situation. Thank you for giving me that realization. The truth is spoken. Yes, uh, by following the instructions. Now, let's get a little bit more personal about it. Huh? Who, you love Prabhupada? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we all, obviously, to some degree, or whatever, we all do. Um, yeah, um, and we want to please him. Okay, but okay. Um, I don't know how to word it in a way that we're going to get there, but basically speaking, we make advancement by... How do we become entangled? Okay, we go the other way. How do you become entangled in the material world? Well, that's kind of something that comes. Um, how do you become... Uh, I'd have to think of something Australian, I think. Um, 
Yeah. When we want to enjoy separate from Krishna. Huh? When we want to enjoy separate from Krishna. Separate from Krishna. And what happens then? Well, yeah, but something happens before. That. Okay, Bhagavad Gita. What is the number of verse? I don't know. I think it's 262. What does Krishna say? Yeah. Well, we have Krishna. Yeah, that's all true. 262. 260. Bhagavad Gita 262. What's he say? And you start surfing at Surfer's Paradise. Okay. <laughs> Got it. The taste, how do you get, you know, how do you become, well, okay, I'll give an example. Prabhupada, this is what Krishna says, it's correct. Uh, Prabhupada, one time, one devotee asked Prabhupada, how do we become, how do we, we become, you know, absorbed in chanting, Prabhupada? How do we become absorbed? Well, Prabhupada said many things, but this is an example. He, he used another example. Now, this is relevant to Australia. He said, how do you become a drunkard? And what is the answer? Associations. You associate with drunkards. And what happens then? Drunkard. You become a drunkard. He's speaking from experience there. He becomes a drunkard. And he said, Sibley, you associate with chanters and you become a chanter. So it's association. What does Lord Kapila Dave say? Every learned man knows. Yeah, carry on. I mean, that's not a very significant part of the statement. <laughs> very well, very good. <laughs> well done. <laughs> That's great. That's a fact. But I wasn't thinking of that. Okay. Um, how does it go now? Muna, no. Well, that's not a verse. Huh? That was the first line. Huh? Pasanga Majaram Vasham. So take that. What is that verse? Kapila Dev. Lord Kapila Dev. Third canto, 25th chapter. I don't know what verse number. Whole series of verses are so significant. It's lined up with this. If you, I don't think we've got it here. Uh, have we got the next volume of the third canto in the, in the bookshelf somewhere? Part two, I guess if it's the same series. This is part one. Part two, chapter 25. And this is very fascinating. I don't think we can have enough time. I was... Thoughts are coming to my mind. Yeah, I'll find it. I'll be quicker. Thanks so much. That's wonderful. Chapter 25. Now... You, many of you are familiar with this chapter. It's quite a um, well-known, quoted chapter. It's called The Glories of Devotional Service. Now, just like here, Vidura is trying to extract the nectar. He's, he's trying to extract the nectar from um, Maitreya Muni. Even though Vidura, in some ways, is um, more of a devotee than Maitreya. But by Krishna's arrangement, and of course Maitreya was there when the Lord departed the world. So he wants to extract the nectar. Well, this, I'll just read text four first of all. Sri Goswami said, the most powerful sage Maitreya was a friend of Vyasadeva. He associated closely with him. Being encouraged and pleased by Vidura's inquiry about transcendental knowledge, Maitreya spoke as follows. So it's the same thing, what we're getting just right here in this Vidura's talks with Maitreya. Uh, Maitreya is very enlivened, he's very encouraged by Vidura's questions. They're relevant, just like we see in the second canto and in the first canto. I don't know if you have to second canto part one here. Do we? You're the book lady. Okay. You're on the ball. It's great you've got someone here who's enthusiastic. Sometimes you ask for a book and nothing happens. <laughs> and then there is no book anyway. Two one? I think it's all in one on this series. I think so. Yeah. Oh. Boo. 
was on the front. That looked like, is it Rukmini Dwarkadish on the front? Oh. Papa said, Radhalandanishwar. <laughs> Where I'm from. He actually said that. He said, you should put Radhalandanishwar on the front. Um, let's have a look. First canto, second. Second canto, chapter one. Text one. Sri Sukadeva Goswami said, my dear king. Now, he's talking with Pariksit Maharaj, of course. My dear king, your question is glorious. Why? Why is it glorious? Because it is beneficial to everyone. Great. Because it is very, not just beneficial, very beneficial. Very beneficial to all kinds of people. It's glorious. It's very yam. The question, Prishnaha, is beneficial to all people. All kinds. The answer to this question is the prime subject matter of hearing, or for hearing. And it is approved by all transcendentalists. And we don't have time to read the purport. Do it yourself. 2211, two, if you want to read it later. Get into this mood. Beneficial questions. Things. What is a beneficial question? I mean, you say, all beneficial to all kinds of people. That will be interpreted, of course, differently by people at different stages of the development. But what, is, what does it mean in this case, in spiritually speaking? What is a beneficial question? Spiritually awakening. Yeah, a spiritually awake. What is it spiritually awakening? What does it awaken? Mayavad philosophy is also spiritual. Knowledge of the past. They also inquire. Huh? Excuse me? Well, it, yeah, it certainly awakens an attraction. It awakens, it's supposed to awaken attraction to find out, whoa, what is, what is the answer to this question? What is the, what is it? People ask questions, everyone's asking questions. Are they really beneficial? This is, ben why is it beneficial to everyone? It's applicable to everyone, although they don't think it is. You, you, try, you go on the street, um, you know, and you try to, you read this question, questions of Vidura, for instance, to my trip. Will it be, do people think it's applicable to them? Probably not. What do they want to know about? How to enjoy. How to enjoy, or maybe some specific detail in there. How do I get here, there, where do I buy this? When we're on Sanctum, we always get people coming up to us. Can you tell me where there's a, you know, there's a good restaurant in Paris, you know? <laughs> do you know where this place is and that place is? Do you have any, you know what? <laughs> yeah, people come up and ask us. <laughs> We've had some really extreme ones. I mean, there's a lot of odd people in Paris. And really extreme. I don't even want them there in uh, the association of such saintly persons. If you, I don't want to pollute your minds. But some of the things they ask us are quite extraordinary. They certainly don't ask you, you know, please, please tell me what is the ultimate goal of existence? How I can develop my unalloyed love for God? <laughs> I've yet to meet someone on the street who asks that. Even devotees don't ask that sometimes. So there's another verse. Now, and the same questions and answers are very satisfactorily dealt with when the inquirer is bona fide and the speaker is also authorized. Then you get a good, it's like man and woman when they're both potent, fertile. Then you get conception. You get the real thing. Not somebody's interpretation, somebody's, you know, what they would like it to be or something, whatever. Bogus. But you get the, you get the opportunity and they won't necessarily tell you right away. We may not be ready. They are prepared as Prabhupada wasn't. You can say the master in this regard. So many times you wonder, well, Prabhupada, that's not answering the question. He gives an answer which doesn't seem to be directly related to the question. He's not, you're not ready to hear the answer. You know, now people want questions. But they're not ready to understand. We've got to be prepared. We've got to be purified. Bhagavatam is taking us step by step.
purification through various avatars, pastimes, etc. Even in the tenth canto takes us like that. So relevant questions. What is relevant to the world? So Pariksit's question is relevant, you could say, to the world. What was that question? What did he ask? Did he ask, you know, what's the weather like today? What's it going to rain today? Uh, is the surf, is there a good surf down on the beach today? That's a common question, isn't it? They say, uh, they say is the surf up? Is that the word? What else do they ask? Oh. In the dark age of Kali Yuga, what is going to be most beneficial for the people? Is that what people ask on the street? Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know. Australians are very advanced in spiritual life. Whew. <laughs> you, you're going back to my original question. Yeah. Well, not original. Yes. What? Well, yeah, I, I, that's true. What? More specific. What did he say? I'm become... Yeah. What? What is the duty of a, a man, a person, who's on the verge of death? What should he be thinking about? I don't know if people ask this question. I mean, they probably wonder what's happening when they die or what's going to happen if there's anything next. But probably they're not thinking of Krishna. Is it? Probably not in transcendence, huh? What are they thinking of? They're thinking maybe of their family or something like that, I don't know. The business or whatever. They're certainly not likely to be thinking of Krishna. So we're here, in one sense, the goal, I mean, there's obviously beyond that, there's the transcendence. But there's a goal that to think of Krishna at the time of death, isn't it? Is that one of our goals? And we don't want to, time of death, we're starting thinking about, you know, some nasty, negative stuff about devotees or this or that, do we? I hope not. We've got to be careful because, you know, if we're too overindulging in this during our lifetime, it might be on our minds, you know. We've got to be careful. Positive. And how do we develop this mood? So let's see. Um, this, these questions are to help because they're to help release the living entity. The questions of a devotee are relevant to help release us from the trap of being caught up in the duality of this world and thinking that I can, we can adjust things in this way and that way to make whatever we think is the right thing. It does, some amount of that is obviously required in society, obviously. But ultimately, that's not the solution if it doesn't bring us to this point. This point of transcendence, this point of becoming absorbed in Shravanam Kirtanam, hearing a chanting about Krishna. So we're going to read a little bit more from the glories of devotional service, but there's another verse in the first canto. Maybe you know that verse. It's in the second chapter of the first canto, I think it's text five. It's very similar to these, all these verses are, have the same basic thread. Two, one, five. One, one, two, five, excuse me. What is that? Oh, hit the nail on the head there, Prabhu. Prabhu, is it? Is your name Prabhu, Prabhu? How do we say it? Prabhu, Prabhu. Pardon? Prabhu, Prabhu. <laughs> it's amazing. Prabhu gave the name Das, Das, Anu, Das to one disciple. You don't know where to stop with the Dasses, do you? <laughs> Das, das, anu, das, 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 Prabhu. Where do you stop? And never, you don't stop. A thousand times he moves. Servant of the servant, 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 servant. So don't forget, it's great name because we address you as Prabhu. And we use, sometimes when we use the word Prabhu, it's not always with the right mood, is it? Prabhu! Prabhu! <laughs> Prabhu! <laughs> you do that again, Prabhu. You're out of here! It's like rid ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> master. We're saying master. And then we're treating him like a dog, you know? Being conscious of what we're saying, you know? Our name's Das, and, you know? 
We think ourselves master, and as Sir someone was saying yesterday, difficult. Bria, I don't know who was saying that. Someone was saying maybe it's Bria. I can't remember. We all got the surname Das or Dasi. Right? And difficult to identify. We got oh Mukundamaj was saying. I was talking to Mukundamaj yesterday. You know, there's like 50 Shamasundars in. You know, I know about 40 Shamasundars. Which one? Shamsundar Das? Yes, yes. They're all Shamsundar Das. <laughs> Anyway, whatever. It's amazing titles. But uh, that verse which Prabhu Prabhu uh, quoted just now, Munayo Sada Prishto Hum, Bhavibir Lokamangalam, Yatkwita Krishna Samprishno, Yenatma Supersedati. Very famous verse. What is, who spoke that? Come on, first canto, chapter two. Who's speaking? Don't look on your mobile now. I know you're the book lady, but. Who spoke? Other than Prabhu Prabhu. <laughs> First canto, chapter two. First canto, chapter one. Who speaks? Come on, sadhvis and sadhus. Huh? First canto, chapter one. Who speaks? Mostly, mostly. I mean, there's a, you know, a few premier work. Introductory verses, but who's the main speakers in that chapter? Good guess. Another one? <laughs> Good guess. Another one? Huh? Yeah. On behalf of the sages and I'm Ashranya. They're asking questions of. Huh? Sutta Goswami. The men are starting to get on top now. You know. <laughs> Ladies are getting tired, I think. You know. They're fed up with this. Yes, they're, they're inquiring. They're trying to extract. They want the solutions to life. Not just some temporary relief which causes, maybe you get some pleasure at the other person doesn't. What pleases you doesn't necessarily please the other one. Isn't it? With questions and answers about Krishna, although they may not understand it, they may not understand, they may not even agree with it, but it ultimately benefits everyone. It's beneficial to all, as watering the root of a tree benefits the whole tree. These are, you know, this is to help everyone to make a step towards transcendence. This is why here it's said Vidura is, uh, is fixed in trans... Oh, Maitreya, Vidura is saying, you're fixed in transcendence. They have no other business other than to... That's our natural condition. It's not our natural condition to fiddle around here trying to satisfy our senses. Doing what I think is right. What do you think? Who cares what you think? Because we care what you think. But in absolute sense, it doesn't really mean anything. You know, Baba said, I remember one time we were on a morning walking in, in the manor. I wasn't there, but the devotees were there. And maybe, I don't know if anyone was in the manor in 1973. But Prabhupada's walking and devotees are there. And I know some of you may know Rohini Nandan Prabhu, not the one, I don't know if you've got one here. Anyway, there's loads of them all over the world. But the Prabhupada disciple in London named Rohini Nandan. Das Prabhu. Um, very wonderful devotee. So he's walking and Prabhupada stops, points his cane up at a tree. What type of tree is this? And when he answered, I think, and Prabhupada just did boom. <laughs> Don't think. No. He was sharp, you know. We tend to, of course we have to think, but you know, we can't base our conclusions just on what we think. We hear them from those who know, those who are in transcendence. Vidura is not just pro approaching any Tom, Dick, or Harry. I don't know, that statement is not, not Australian. Um, but he wasn't approaching any old body. He was approaching somebody you know, who's actually in transcendence, or somebody who has knowledge, somebody who's beyond the limits of sense perception. That's the idea. So we're going to read on now. Your questions are glorious, uh, Sutta Goswami said, because they relate to the personality of Godhead. 
Anything that we can relate to the personality of God is glorious and beneficial. Every situation that exists can, by one who's you know, on that, especially on the platform of transcendence, can see it in relation with Krishna, even though it may not look. I'll give an example. In 73 or so, Srila Prabhupada was talking to a very famous man in the manor. His name was, um, oh, he's a motor racer. What was his name? Graham Hill. Graham Hill. Thank you for that. Graham Hill. And maybe you've read the conversation. I don't even know if the conversation's available. But basically speaking, Srila Prabhupada was just allowing the man to feel like there was a relationship there. The man had no interest other than motor racing, practically speaking. That was his life and soul. And Prabhupada's going along with it. But eventually, eventually Prabhupada brought in the beginning of transcendence. Maybe you're not your body. We talk all these things, but how many of us are really, really convinced we're not the body or the mind? Theoretically, but practically, if we're really convinced, I don't know if we'd be doing many of the things we're doing or saying what we're saying. I don't know. It's a basic thing. So probably the, the, the A in the alphabet, the A, not the Z, the A, he managed to bring it in at a certain point, danger, almost dying. Have you ever thought about what happens? Don't you feel scared? We're like that. And Prabhupada then introduced the spiritual aspect to the conversation. Maybe it didn't go much further, but that's the, basically all he can handle at this point of time. What a person can digest. You don't feed a person something they can't digest. Huh? How is that helping them? They'll get constipated or diarrhea or something. And then they get diarrhea, they spill over everybody. They're constipated. Oh. <laughs> something you could digest. Yeah, we've all got that experience in practical sense with food. Not to speak of transcendental knowledge. We misuse it, abuse it. Even topics between devotees are oftentimes not relevant to our spiritual advancement. They may be relevant in some area, but we get polluted, and our mind becomes absorbed in it. We don't really know the answer anyway. It just churns our mind. It churns in the mind. I'm going to read on. The glorious, where are we, third canto. The glorious of devotional service. And we're going to bump forward a little bit too, because then what happens is in the glories of devotional service. Let's see. Well, we'll go forward a few verses. This is also a conversation with Maitreya Vidura. Am I in the right chapter here? Okay. Is that tw chapter 20? Here it is. I've got it. Every, this is the verse which Prabhu Prabhu, no, it wasn't. It's the verse that well, see, Kananda mentioned the first line. Every learned man knows very well that attachment for the material is the greatest entanglement for the spirit soul. Greatest entanglement. But that same attachment, when applied to the self-realized devotees, opens the door of liberation. Nothing wrong with attachment, it's just the direction of the attachment. By association, we may become attracted or attached to something. By, and then we become entangled in the material world. We associate with the modes of nature, we become attached, we become entangled, we want it, and that's naturally we fall down and we lose our real intelligence. Our intelligence is then completely absorbed in trying to fulfill, you know, whatever attachments we have. When that same principle is, is directed towards the self-realized souls, those who are in transcendence, nothing wrong with attachment, just transfer it to hearing and chanting from the right source, from those who are never to Trishna, those who don't have any material, you know, um, agendas. 
Their only agenda is to release living entities from birth, death, disease, old, to release us from this cycle of birth and death in the material world of ignorance and to help us to come to realize our real business. So we practice in this world and they give us this opportunity, just like back to the question about, you know, how we had become entangled by association, how we become released, also this verse said, by association with self-realized souls. So similarly, you can say, well, Srila Prabhupada, I didn't get the chance to associate with him. You, you, anyone could say that, we may have had a little association. But for many of you, you, never, you, can, you sometimes may say, oh, I missed out. I never had the association of Prabhupada. You were lucky. You had some association. I never got it. You sometimes do always say like that. What would you say? What would you say to that? Association is in the books. Good one. Association is in the books. Take that a little bit deeper. Not deeper, clearer. Sure, Prabhupada is still here in his instructions, in his humility, in his movements. Okay. You'll find that many of those who had the personal association of Prabhupada, of course, that's eternally, unlimitedly, mercifully beneficial. But many desisted from following Prabhupada's instructions. Correct or not? So, what does Prabhupada say? There's a two, doesn't he say there's two ways to associate? Vapu, you all know what that means, not all, but most of you know. What is Vapu? Personal form. Huh? Personal form, associating with, just like, to some degree, we're associating on that level now. And what is Vani? Instructions. Instructions. Uh, which is, which is uh, they're both great. And when the spiritual master is personally present, the vapu should be taken. But in the big picture, which is more important? The vani. It's through vani that you understand vapu, not the other way around. If we don't take the vani as our life and soul, we will never really understand the vapu. It's a sentiment, sometimes a, not even a beneficial one. We use it and makes we get proud, puffed up, thinking, I'm a Prabhupada disciple, listen to me. I'll pray for you. you know, it's, that, that's not the point. It's the instruction. Srila Prabhupada hasn't come, you know, like some kind of, you know, you know, these fashion displays, you know, displaying here I am or something. Look at Prabhupada, you know. Look at his dhoti. Look at his ring. Oh, look at the wrinkles. Look at this, look at that. It's not important. It may be to give a visualization in your heart, you could say. But the essential thing are the instructions. This is the mercy of the spiritual master. He gives us instructions, guidance, what to follow. Some general ones, of course, are there specific also. And this is how we associate with the spiritual master, by following those instructions. So back to our original question, why are you here today? We're here today to associate with Srila Prabhupada. Not with me or this or that, but to remember, this is the mercy. Srila Bhagavatam, Mangalarti, Japa, everything that he's given us. This is associating with Prabhupada through Vani. And that way you'll get his association. Doesn't matter if you just walked in the door. Even the bird gets the benefit. The degree, to the degree, to what degree? An essential feature, which is not mentioned here, is mentioned in one of the other verses just now. Essential, to hear, to hear. Association is like, you can be in the room right now, but you're not hearing anything. Sometimes you see devotees fast asleep during class. I don't know how fast. Slow asleep, slowly asleep. How much do you hear? Some distant, but you won't get the same. Attentive hearing. Same when we chant Japa. Huh? You know that when you're with somebody, if you're not attentive to what they say, they can usually feel it because you're not really interested. Therefore, they don't get the same reciprocation. To take advantage of Prabhupada's association here, just here, is a secret, huh? All throughout the Bhagavatam, there's principles. The first thing Prabhupada says, hearing, shravanam. 
You can't chant unless you hear practically. You've got to hear first. Baba said himself when he was taking initiation, his Guru Mahath said, he is qualified. This young man hears nicely. Hearing, hearing the subject matter. And it doesn't just mean, you know, in one ear or out the other. That, uh, what was class about this morning? I don't know. Can you remember anything? Um, Puris and Halava. <laughs> it's the only thing you can remember about the class, I don't know when it was yesterday or whenever it was. Probably that's the only thing you can remember, Puris and Halava. Something which is, you know, on our minds right now with breakfast being served. Um, and it's the last thing, usually. You, oftentimes you read a long purport. Any questions? It's only on the last sentence that anyone asks any questions. Quite often it's like that. Our memory is so bad. So how to, what to do about that? How are, we gonna, how are we gonna come to transcendence? How are we gonna become, you know, seriously inquisitive? How are we, what, what are we gonna do? Coming together like this, okay, that's great. Anything else? Knowing how to be properly attached. Knowing how what? Properly attached. Yeah, that's knowledge. Uh, knowing proper association, maybe you could take it even further how to associate, who to associate, etc., when, etc. That's not always easy either. Anything else? Through service. Huh? Service to the devotee. Service? Yes, service. That's also stated there in the second, second chapter. Sudhadana Shivasa Deva Katarji. Serving those devotees who are freed of all vice, great service is done by such service. One develops an affinity for hearing the messages of Vasudev. Because by hearing or developing that affinity, Shrinvatam Shrakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana, Krishna removes. He removes the coverings in our heart. The abhadras, the anartas in our heart, the unwanted attachments that we have. We may think we want them, but they're covering our, our consciousness and blocking our progress in spiritual life. So yes, it's a very important point. Service to the Vaishnavas. What else can we do? Very good. Prayer um, um, and, and glorification of Vaishnava, is that what you said? Well, also reciting their prayers. Yeah, oh yeah, good. reciting the prayers of the pure devotees. They don't, they're not coming here because, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're actually on the transcendental platform. They're offering their prayers out of their natural love of Krishna, but they're sharing them with the world because we need them. It's we who need these various merciful words of the pure devotees who offer these prayers to the Lord so that we can recite these and thus become purified. That's another way of associating with devotees, repeating their words, repeating their prayers. And that way we can develop that mood. They're teaching us the mood which will invoke, evoke the mercy of the Lord. What else? The men are well on top now, ladies. And you must be hungry. Okay. We, we come to you know, get glimpses into the spiritual realities of life so that we don't, we can um, not fall back into uh, material sense gratification. What was the first line? We come to get, uh, we come to hear. Okay, this is specific, yeah. We come to hear so that maybe our intelligence is a little sharpened and we don't e so easily fall back into the... Uh, our kind of material kind of weaknesses and so on the material whirlpool. Uh, yes. Anything else before we close shop? To hear each other's questions. Hear, hearing, yeah, we're back to attentive hearing, hearing others' questions, and following on from that, there's a little something. And now in the Bhagavad Gita, in the fourth chapter, uh, Krishna, I don't know the verse number, but he says something which, uh, to me, means a lot. And it, it may not mean the same to everyone. But he says, one who applies oneself to this knowledge realizes this knowledge in due course of time. Now, when we hear something, it's, we're meant, it's meant, it has a meaning. Now, little intelligence to know time, place, circumstance. But in principle, what we hear at least in the spiritual realm, 
uh, ha it has some application. It's not just something we hear. At different levels, it may be different. We may not know how to apply something on a higher level. We may not need to apply something on a lower level. But whatever level we're on, if we hear the relevant subject matter, we're meant to apply it. It's like if you give me a, a, say, some of you are expert cooks. I know that much. Who's the expert cooks around here? Huh? One just Did they? Oh, what a shame. Any other expert cooks here? Where, where, is, uh, where is he? Probably cooking <laughs> where, well, I, uh, yeah, I mean, he, he's, he's, all his life he's been cooking. He does cook a bit over opulently sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <clears throat> But yes, he, he has a love for cooking, and him, anyone can taste the love coming through. So, okay, he gives you a recipe. Great. Is that enough? Is that going to fill your belly? Huh? What do you like to eat? Come on, what do they like to eat in Australia? Huh? What's that? I can't, it's too many talking at once here. It's very enthusiastic about what you like to eat. What was over here if somebody said something? Prashadam. Okay, you do. You like to eat prashadam, but specifically what? You said sweet rice, I think you said. Halal huh? and, huh? and sweet rice. So that's a, not an Australian dish. Um, Mango lassi. Huh? Mango lassi. Mango lassi. Oh, my God. They've got breakfast time today. Mango lassi. Pizza, that's more world famous amongst all kinds of people. You know, sweet rice and puris doesn't mean anything. You know, you go on the street in Italy, then what are they talking about, you know? But pizza, I think everybody in the world knows pizza. And many of the boys, you know, when you say pizza, they turn up. They come out of the forest, they come out of the ground. I don't know where they come from. It's a pizza party, and there's hardly one who's not present, right? Isn't it? Pizza is the, the, the food of the day. <laughs> to me, is to me, I, don't, I hope there's no Italians here or any. <laughs> it's, it's like tomato and cheese on toast, you know. <laughs> oh, I'll never be welcome again. <laughs> I was born in England. We didn't know what pizza was until I was 40 years old. Never heard of it. I've heard of it, but never had it. So, um, anyway, whatever it is, it's very popular. So, uh, if you just give me the recipe, can I have a pizza, please? Here's the recipe. You have no means to cook it, by the way. You don't know how to cook it. But here's the recipe. You have no facility to cook it. Here's the recipe. Take it. You're going to eat the recipe? I don't think you'll be very satisfied. You have to, it has to be prepared. You have to put it into practice. Put it into practice. Then, if you follow the recipe, what happens? Satisfaction. You get a nice hot pizza with a crunchy crust and all kinds of delicious items on top. And especially if you like olives. My problem is I don't like olives. I think that's the real, the real problem there. But if you like olives and you like what else you put on there, man, what cheese, this type of cheese and that thing and that thing. And it is irresistible, by the way. I won, although I never eat pizzas. I did enter a pizza eating contest once in New Zealand, and I won the contest. <laughs> I had nine pizzas. I didn't even want it. I mean, I wasn't interested in it, but that was a long time ago. <laughs> I wouldn't do it now. <laughs> Before I took sannyas. <laughs> I'll just read one or two of my verses and. Bob is your uncle. And then, Lord, here we see the symptoms of a sadhu are given. He is tolerant, merciful, friendly to all living entities, no enemy, peaceful, abides by scriptures. All the characteristics are sublime. Sadhu Bhushana, beautiful, famous verse. Such a sadhu engages in staunch devotional service to the Lord without deviation. For the sake of the Lord, he renounces all other connections, such as family relationships and friendly acquaintances within this world. Engaged constantly 
engaged constantly in chanting and hearing about me. In other words, he's like this, he's absorbed in transcendence. Constantly in chanting and hearing about me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the sadhus do not suffer from material misery because they're always filled with thoughts of my pastimes and activities. When I was on the transcendental platform, even though materially this is happening and that's happening, uh, one is, is, is here, does not suffer from that. It may be there. I remember one time our God brother Sridhar Maharaj, um, Sridhar Swami, I think Sridhar Swami, it's gone. Sridhar Swami, he said, uh, well, he was very sick. His body was wrought with different sicknesses. And one day he said, uh, you must be in so much pain, Maharaj. He said, the pain is there, but you don't have to suffer. It doesn't matter what your absorption is, what your identity is. Interesting. And now one of my favorite verses. Oh, my mother, O oh, virtuous lady, eti sadhava sadvi. See here, sadvi, virtuous lady. Sadhu, sadvi. Sarva sangha vidyajitaha. <clears throat> oh, virtuous lady, these are the qualities of great devotees who are free from all attachment. Then nivita trishna, nivita tarshu, bhagiyamanad. You must seek attachment to such holy men. For this counteracts the pernicious. What does pernicious mean? Unwanted, Unwanted is a very gentle word. Nasty. Nasty. Very, un, very unpleasant. Nasty. The unpleasant effects of material attachment counteracts it, the asango, the association of devotees. To hear, and then the key, one key verse is famous to all. Satambhasanga, virya sangvido, vasayana kataha, to joshana dashva pavaga vartmani, shradaratir bhaktir anukramishyati. In the association of pure devotees, Discussion of the pastimes and activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is very pleasing and satisfying to the ear and the heart. By cultivating such knowledge, one gradually becomes advanced on the path of liberation and thereafter he is freed and his attraction becomes fixed. Then real devotion and devotional service begin. We're in the preparation stage, you know? <laughs> Preparing. So this verse here, meditate on it. Great pro process of advancing in Krishna consciousness, Prabhupada said, is described here. The first point is one must, must seek the association of persons who are Krishna conscious and who engage in devotional service. Without such association, one cannot make advancement. Simply by theoretical knowledge or study, one cannot make any appreciable advancement. One must give up the association of materialistic persons and seek the association of devotees because without the association of devotees, one cannot understand the activities of the Lord. Generally, people are convinced of the impersonal feature because they do not associate with devotees. They cannot understand that the absolute truth can be a person and have personal activities. This is a very difficult subject matter. And unless one has personal understanding of the absolute truth, there is no meaning to devotion. We have to understand it. That realization of jnana comes by applying what we hear in our lives to, to ourselves, not just to others. Service or devotion cannot be offered to anything impersonal. Service must be offered to a person. Non-devotees cannot appreciate Krishna consciousness by reading the Srimad Bhagavatam or any other Vedic literature wherein the activities of the Lord are described. They think these activities are fictional, manufactured stories because spiritual life is not explained to them in the proper mood. To understand the personal activities of the Lord, one has to seek the association of devotees and by such association, when one contemplates and tries to understand the transcendental activities of the Lord, the path of liberation is open and he is freed. 
This is the greatest welfare work the gopis themselves say this Tama Katamitam Tapta Jivanam Kavibiritam Kalma Shapam Shavana Mangalam Shimanatatam Bhuvi Gunatiye Bhuvi Janaha. They're the greatest welfare workers who spread this message all over the world because they're really bringing benefit, auspiciousness to the world. Everyone else is just drawing their minds around, creating more complications. The more we're fixed on their devotional practice, their goal, hearing chanting, and their ultimate goal, the more we can benefit even other devotees. Just gossiping doesn't benefit anyone. Ill feel it is. We've got to be try to help each other. One who has firm faith in the personality of Godhead becomes fixed. And his attraction for association with the Lord and the devotees increases. Association with devotees means association with the Lord. The devotee who makes this association develops the consciousness for rendering service to the Lord. And then being situated in the transcendental position of devotional service, he gradually becomes perfect. And it goes on, on, which you need to read yourself. I'm going to finish there uh, for this morning. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I don't know. Yes. Ask a you may ask a question, and we'll see what the result of that is. Hare Krishna, thank you so much for the wonderful class. Uh, so we're hearing about the uh, hearing about the importance of hearing from the great sages, Shri Prabhupada, all the great sages in Bhagavad uh, the importance of hearing from them, associating with them. Serving them. Some one devotee asked me a question: What's more important, uh, associating with the sadhu or engaging in activities like distributing books, preaching? And I said both are very important. And he said, No, you're wrong. Associating with the sadhu is more important. Would you like to give an answer to this? Would I like to give an answer to that? I would like to give an answer to that. You put me in a very wonderful situation. And yes, because you made a specific, like engaging in service. And you said specifically like book distribution. It could be any service, deity worship, etc. So it's a wonderful topic. And you can, uh, a deep understanding of what it means to associate with the sadhu. <laughs> Certainly, if there's an opportunity to associate with, and how you define a sadhu, of course, we've just heard, you know, in one sense, where do you find the sadhu? Um, but let's say, your point, associating with a sadhu, yes, we take advantage. We don't know what service is. We don't know what pleases Krishna. We don't know how to perform the service. How do we know what to do unless we associate with a sadhu? How can you know? We can't speculate. Of course, in the beginning, the sentiment, I've heard it's very good to do this, we'll do it. Maybe, maybe we have some faith. But ultimately, to, to perform devotional service in a way which pleases Krishna fully, and to become free of any other agenda, motivation, etc., we need the association of the sadhu. They will cut, the sadhu cuts out whatever is unfavorable for devotional service. At the same time, if the sadhu, we have to know what pleases the sadhu. You can go in front of the sadhu and challenge. You can go in, the sad, in front of a sadhu and be totally disinterested. Is that association with the sadhu? Yes and no. Maybe some distant benefit. Well, you go in front of the sadhu and you hear. And the sadhu says to you, go out on book distribution. No, no, I just want to associate with you, Gurudev. Go out on book distribution. No, no, I want to stay here. Go out on book distribution. So what are you going to do? Which is, which is right? Which is the right association? What would you do? Yeah. So you, you, know, you, can't, you can't give a black and white answer there. The sadhu may say, stay here, listen. You're a fool, you don't know nothing. Stay here and learn. Or he may say, go out and do this, do that, do this, do that. 
And what do you, you're going to do what he says. That's how you associate with the sadhu. You don't speculate on it. You have to hear from them what it means. And they may give different instructions to different people. Because you're on different levels. You're not going to say the same thing necessary to everyone. Baba has, you can say, is everyone, he wrote one letter. Everyone should go out on book distribution. But he said many other things, too. That isn't like the only instruction he gave. Time, place, circumstance. But we have to understand that. Probably is that example. I'm hearing, I'm associating. Can you please bring me a cup of water? Please speak and carry on speaking, Guru Dave. I'm relishing everything you say. Please bring me a cup of water. Jai Guru Dave, Jai Guru Dave. Please bring me a cup of water. Baba gives that example. You don't bring anything. You think you're associating, but you're not. It's not something we can, you know, sentimentally understand. You've got to hear what it means. So they're both correct, and they can both be wrong also. Time and circumstance. Does that make any sense? If there weren't any other questions, I'd just like to make a comment. If possible, just for one minute. As you are um, reflecting back on the time when you and I were neighbors down here in the bottom in two different rooms, and how we were reading the Bible down the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. 30, so, 30, 32 years ago. Yeah, you were speaking. I mean, basically, there's a nice. There's a nice opportunity to show how one makes the proper attachment. You know, you were such a lovely example of somebody who's properly attached. And in that way, actually, you know, how attachment can be good, can be negative. The proper would say said that uh, it's like a caterpillar. It doesn't let go of the leaf at a time until it's firmly fixed. So how to become attached? And the other thing that I wanted to mention in that, during that time of our reading, I've got a memory of coming across where Prabhupada wrote in the Bhagavatam how one's mind is all we have. How it is the same as improper attachment is to actually befriend the mind as because Prabhupada wrote that it is all we have and it takes us right through to the Varagi River. It's the same mind that we have in many births all the way back to the causal ocean or the Amuna River. So in that way, you know, to understand how if the mind is all we have, it's a process again of actually, because it's not the intelligence, the intelligence changes given by Krishna in so many ways, but actually it's the mind we have to steer to be able to hear properly, to take on instruction. So how do we make the mind our friend? If you have a friend, what does that mean? What are you going to do? Someone's your friend, what are you going to do? Careful. Punch him in the face? No. Give him poison? You're going to care for them. You're going to care for them. And you're going to try to give that which is best, right? You're going to try to do the best thing. So the best thing, of course, to solve intelligence is our means. It's supposed to be the means of guiding the mind or rationalizing with the mind's thoughts. So what are we going to do? Try, if he's really our friend, you're going to try to, to have the mind associate with Krishna, right? You're going to try to fill the mind with some kind of devotional thoughts. I'd like to add one other thing you mentioned, because it struck me, that becoming attached to somebody, uh, to a sadhu, yes, absolutely. But there's a risk, well, not say a risk, there's another factor there. Identifying a sadhu. You become attached to somebody who's not in transcendence. Now, of course, with many factors can be spoken. But in essence, you're associating with a person who is full of agendas, material agendas or impersonal agendas. It will affect us. They may be classified as a sadhu, like... Some people may, you, you, you just said in your own words, are classifying somebody like me, and I don't see it like that. You know, I've got other thoughts, other agendas, I'm not in transcendence. We're just trying to repeat what the sadhu says. 
where Prabhupada's book says safe, safe zone, of course, it should be, safe zone, pure devotees of the Lord. But when we repeat what they say, to that degree, you could say, the association of sadhu is coming through. We've got to be also a little bit intelligent, to be careful. You know, because naturally what I'm interested in, or my weaknesses, or my intentions, my anatas, is going to be have an effect on those who are around me. They may not detect it, but it will. Whereas a real sadhu, he cuts out our anatas. He removes them. By their, just by their association. You know, everyone has had the opportunity when you come into the association of a very advanced Vaishya, knows what the effect is. In front of Prabhupada, you know, you may have so many, oh, problems, this, I mean, they just go away. They're just like, boom, probably like the sun. It just evaporates all the, you know, urine, all the rotten things are just, boom, evaporated. Well, material attachments become meaningless. It's a real association of sadhu. Otherwise, it's just relatively speaking, we're making advance. But when we try to repeat, and when we apply what we hear, then some Krishna sees, and the purification of heart really starts to happen, and real devotional service. When we come to that spiritual platform, we heard real devotional service begins, Brahma Bhutta Pasadatma, when we come to that spiritual platform, where there's no more nakangshiti, uh, and no more hankering, and the shojati, no more lamenting. On that platform, in real devotional service, there. so that's the hankering. We hanker for that association of those devotees who are on that platform, never to Trishta, have no, they're not carrying any material baggage. No more, as the verse said just now, no more affection for society or family and this, that, and the other. Doesn't mean they're callous towards them, but they have no material affection for it. Pure in heart, pure in heart. It's not easy. You know, we could go on and on. How do you find out in some? But this is the principle. I'm going to finish there. Srila Prabhupada Kijai, thank you very much for your association. And uh, Hare Krishna. Now it's time for Halavam Puri. Halavam Puri time. Well, maybe we'll see you at the Gold Coast on Sunday. The Rathayatra. Some of you may be coming. Shri Jagannath Baladev Sabhadra Kijai. Oh, Prem Anandi.